So, you know I like to make graphs. If you don't know I like to make graphs, let me tell you that I like to make graphs. And I normally make my graphs in Web vPython, GlowScript, uh, vPython, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and, and, I, and I think I'm fairly skilled at that. But there are some things that you can't do. Uh, and so some things you have to use a better plotting. And so I want to show you graphing in Python and kind of GlowScript vPython and kind of transition that to Jupyter plotting with matplotlib um, and and just show you how you do the same thing because there, there is something very different. You can do them the same way, but there is something very different. So let me make a graph in GlowScript vPython uh, very quickly. Hopefully you've seen this before. I have a whole tutorial on graphing in GlowScript vPython. Uh, so I'm just going to make a graph. Let's say G1 is graph. Uh, X uh, Let's give it a title. Title equals my graph. And I'm just, I'm just doing dumb stuff here. Uh, X title title equals X. Uh, I'm going to do sine of X versus X. So let's say, and then Y title is equal, this is called Y. Uh, let's give it a width of 400 and a height of 200. Uh, this will make it just appear better when I do the screen capture. This part itself doesn't do anything except make the boundaries of the graph. Running this right now won't do anything. I have to have something to plot. So I need a function to plot and that's going to be F1 equals G curve color equals color dot blue. Okay, so there's my, my curve. Now I need to calculate the values of Y. So I'm going to say X equals zero. And, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with X. I'm going to move my X values along and each time calculate my value of Y, which is sine of X, and plot that. So X, I need, I need to know what my starting value is. I know, need to know how far to move. So I'm going to say X equals zero, DX equals 0 0.01. And then let's just jump into it. So I'll say while X is less than, let's say, two. I'm going up to X equals two. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is calculate. I don't even need to do this. I can do this in one step. Y equals sine of X. I know there's, there should be some units there, but don't worry about it. Now I'm going to plot that. To plot that, I say I made that function F1. I'm going to say F1.plot, and I give it my horizontal coordinate, my vertical coordinate, and that's it. So my horizontal coordinate is X. My vertical coordinate is Y. Now, this is the part that if you don't do, you're really going to be sorry about it. I need to do this. X equals X plus dx. So I need to increase my value of x, go back up to the end of the, to the loop again, and then keep doing that until it is or is not uh, less than 2. And let's just run it. There you go. Okay, so that's, I need, let me increase this to 5, just so it looks signy. Oh, let's do a little bit more. Let's do 8. Okay, so there's my graph. My graph, um, y versus x you know you you have this uh cursor in here i mean, I, I like i like glow script vpython i like the graphs they're easy to make nice graphs uh i know how to make animated graphs i know how to make multiple graphs i know how to make graphs on each thing i know how to make a dot uh animate along there i know all that stuff because i use it and, and the thing is once you have a tool and you're good with that tool use that tool uh instead of having to learn a new tool Okay, so I want to go ahead and uh, let's save this. Sign graph example, and I'll give you the code. And that's the other thing I like about this. I can link, I can make a, I can share this link and you can just see the code and edit it right away. You don't even have to log in. And I think that's awesome. So uh, this is trinket.io. Uh, you can also run it on WebVPython, which used to be called glowscript.org. Um, but I like it because it has a side-by-side -side windows. Okay, so let's let me show you Jupyter Notebook right here. This is Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter, let me go back over here. This looks like Python, but this actually is not Python. This is stuff that gets converted into JavaScript. I think it's JavaScript and run in the web page. That's how it's able to run in a web page. This is actual real Python. It has a web page that's running on my own computer. Um, but it's still just real Python. Uh, and that means that you have to install it. You have to load modules and all that stuff. So if you want to get this on uh, on your machine working, I think the best way to do it is, is this, Anaconda. So Anaconda, uh, and they have a free version of everything for academics. So it, this is what I would do. This, 
uh, installs a whole bunch of stuff. It installs Python, it installs Jupyter Notebooks, it installs you know lots of things, and it's easy to manage different modules. Now I've had some problems getting. You can actually get GlowScript. You can get VPython to run in a Jupyter Notebook, uh, but I had a little trouble with that. But you can get it to work. Okay, so the other nice thing that's uh, about Jupyter Notebooks, which I'm not going to show you. Uh, is you have these blocks of code and you can do everything in one block but you can take a block write some code a next block could be uh, some some text uh, you could have other things in there so you it's literally a notebook with some code that runs in there and I think that's pretty cool okay so we want to make a graph uh, normal Python doesn't have a lot of the stuff that we need so we need to import stuff and that the two modules that we're going to need to import are uh, NumPy, I like to call it NumPy, but you know, you call it what you want to call it, right? It's N-U-M-P-Y, where the Pi is for the Pi, Python. Uh, and that has a whole bunch of numerical functions in there, like sign, like Pi, uh, like stuff like that. Uh, and then the other one is matplotlib, uh, in particular matplotlib pyplot, and this has the stuff to make a graph. So I'm going to go ahead and import those, and I'm just going to import those. So I'm going to do that by saying import, uh, numpy as mp and by doing that whenever i do mp dot it's going to say oh i'm going to use that thing from numpy and that way if if i had i won't confuse which module i'm taking stuff from i'm also going to say import matplotlib dot pyplot as PLT. And you're going to also see that everyone does the same thing. They always call NumPy as, or NumPy as MP and PyPlot as PLT. It's just what everyone does. Now in, um, in Jupyter Notebooks, you can run this section of code. You can also press Shift Enter and it runs it. And this little asterisk right there tells you that it's still running. It's still importing those things. Now it's done. Okay. So now if I, in this cell down here, I can actually use those things because it's already done. Um, okay. Let's just go ahead and make my plot. Now, here is where we have something very different. And, and this is actually pretty powerful. I can say this, watch this. X equals NP dot arrange. I always get it, I always put one extra word in there. Arrange uh, zero to, what did I do? I did zero to eight. Let's just do uh, zero to one for now. Zero to, uh, one by 0 0.11. Okay, so this is my starting number. This is going to make a list of numbers. It's going to actually make technically into an array. Um, this is my starting number. That's my final number, and this is my step size. So if I do that and then just do print x, let's run that and see what happens. Nothing happened. Oh, no, it's sorry. I'm sorry. I got that backwards. It goes 0 to 1 by the step size, 0.1. And it goes up to that value. Uh, so I have, it starts at 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. And there are other ways you can actually get that 1 in there if you want it to. I don't really care. Uh, but you can see here it made a list. Oh, it's actually an array of all those values. Now, this is way better than a list, okay, because I can actually do stuff like this. I'm going to leave that there uh, just in case you need that. Uh, so I could do this, print x squared. And, and how do you square a list? Well, in this instance, an array, it understands that that means I want to square each individual value. So let's see if that runs. So it did that, right? So here's the last one is 0 0.9. 0 0.9 squared is 0 0.81. It worked. Okay. Um, so that's cool. You can actually do operations with this. And you can see the difference here. Instead of going through each value of x and calculating sign, I don't need to do that. I can just calculate it all at one time. I don't need a loop. And that's kind of awesome. So I can just say y equals np.sign of x. That's all I have to do. And then I can print y, and you can just see what that looks like. So there's my y values. No loops needed. Kind of cool. Okay. Now, does that make it better? I mean, I don't think it makes it better in terms of learning. I still think it's better uh, from a learning standpoint to go through each point in the graph. And that's what I really like about uh, GlowScript. It, it doesn't give you the answer in the easiest way. It gives it in the most transparent way. And that's what I like. But like I said, sometimes this is just better. Okay, so now I have my X, I have my Y, I can plot them. 
So let's just go ahead. I'm going to want to print this. I'm just going to plot it. So it's just, it's super simple. PLT, right? Because that's my matplotlib. Uh, so I have to do that dot. And then the function is plot. And I want to plot x versus y. X, Y. And then I need to do, it depends on the way you have it installed. If I, if I do this, I don't think it runs. Oh, it did. Okay. Sometimes you may have to do plt.plot. Uh, dot show and then run it okay so that just depends but there's my function I had uh, x from 0 to 1 of 0 0.1 uh, things I can change this to 8 like I had over there and then oh, I ran that I don't want to print that let's just comment that out uh, and then I'm gonna run this line see if I that cell I had to rerun it because I changed it uh, so I can re I have to, all I have to do is rerun the cell and there you go. Done. Okay. Now we we definitely want to prettyfy it, right? So let's do let's add some things here. I can say plt.x. Is it called label? I think it's called x label. X label. Uh, and then I just say what is the x label, and I say that's x. And I can do plt dot dot y label what is the y label it's y and i can run that and then you see it's looking a little bit nicer then one of the things that i like to add on there is a grid i can say plt dot grid i don't need to give it anything and then i got that and that's pretty nice right that's a pretty nice graph which one's better um i don't know i'm just i just like this one better but that's me okay so let's see what else do I need to know how to do? Um, I think that's good. Let's see. If you want to, if you want other options, there's a whole bunch of stuff. If you just Google um, matplotlib pyplot options, you can find a whole bunch of details on this website. Uh, this is the stuff I did. You can plot individual points instead of uh, a line. Uh, I think that's putting that R O in there. That I think the options are not transparent because you see right here if I do like uh, T versus T I'm not sure what that's doing but this R dash dash uh, BS is blue squares and this is code that just doesn't make sense to me I don't I don't know what that means um, here's some more complicated plotting that you could do I don't even know what that is category yes you can do everything I mean it can do everything and this is professional level plotting um, so the other thing that I would like to point out, the two things that I want to use Jupyter for, it's not this. I don't, I don't mind making a loop to make a graph. But the two things I cannot do in GlowScript vPython very easily, there's tricks to do it, but it's not very nice, uh, contour plots and vector field plots. Because I'm doing line integrals and stuff like that, and it's very useful to do contour plots uh, or even 3D contour plots. Uh, and Jupyter Notebooks does that very well, or Matplotlib does that very well. GlowScript vPython just doesn't have that at all. So, um, okay, that's that. Uh, I'm going to give you a link to the sign graph, even though you probably don't need it, um, and some other links down below. And really, this, this video is for me, because I forget how to do it. If I don't do Matplotlib uh, plotting in a while, I forget. So, this is something for me to look at. You can look at it, too. We can both look at it. Okay, that's that. If you have questions, you can ask, but I might not know the answer.